flow state, gliding intuitively, grinding instinctively, surviving the wilderness until... Welcome to the world of college hockey. A spontaneous rush. An explosion combusting into joy, burning with pride. The state of hockey is a state of frenzy. Save by David. another save! Adrenaline pumping, senses firing. Two teams left, dreaming of dog piles and victory laps. A state of bliss. Scott Denver to the championship game! Here comes Leonard, he's got Smith. Smith, shot! Welcome to the state of hockey. Now go get what you came for. There are 64 Division I men's hockey teams. Only one gets to go home with that trophy, the National Championship Trophy. And it will be awarded in the state of hockey. The Denver Pioneers, the Boston College Eagles, two storied programs playing for a championship. Perhaps the most important position is the goaltender. There's Matt Davis. What a tournament he has had. MOP in Springfield since March the 1st, 10 and 1. 935 save percentage. Look at those numbers. And Matt Davis, it's a good time to have your A game, Colby Cohen. Three goals over three tournament games. Are you kidding me? The saves that he made against numerous Boston University Terriers. He stood tall. He made the timely ones. He was under control. Boy, does this guy give the Denver Pioneers a heck of a lot of confidence. They're 13-1-1 in their last 15. For Boston College, they have the only goalie here at the Frozen Four who was drafted. Third rounder from Montreal. I know he's impressed you a lot. Watching how calm and cool this guy plays the position. Look, I'm not a goalie guy, but when I watch him play, he looks like he covers every angle. He's got no panic. He gives his defensemen more confidence. He is a superstar in the making. I see why the Canadians scooped him up in the third round. He is the future of that hockey club. And Cutter Gauthier is the offensive machine. 38 goals to lead the nation. Massimo Rizzo. He won a championship in Boston in 2022. And he's healthy, and he's on the top line to start the national championship game. It's hockey, baby. <laughs> the last college hockey game of the season is underway. Fortescue and Powell. And there's Denver back in that 1-2-2. Two, two. Good weak side pass. That's what Boston College likes to do. Get it to Gasso. Yelby pokes it towards Goche. He supplies the first hit of the game. Gasso keeps it in, calmly calms it down. But Rose has it up the wall. Powell knocks him down, kicks it forward, and it comes to center ice. Yeah, watch out, Boston College tries to use the weak side. They'll hinge it there, then they'll hit it up the weak side. And that's where they like to get their offense. Yelvik pounding on the loose puck. The freshman line now will make their first shift in the national championship game. Centered by Will Smith. Here's Gabe Perot. Throws it towards Ryan Leonard. And there's Smith, number six. First round draft pick of the Sharks. Again, leads the nation in scoring. He's the center. The wingers are Perot and Leonard. ECAC officials calling the national championship game. Hershark steps up. And Manedian goes back to get it. Denver seeking their 10th national title. Turnover in the new zone. That's what Denver wants. Here they go. Looking to pounce early. Fowler makes his first save of the game. Stopping Miko Matica, who's a dangerous goal-scoring spin. And now Denver has their cycle underway. Aiden Thompson, slippery center. Blackhawk draft pick. He can really wheel. Look at him go. Good stick by Perot. Finishes with the body. And Manedian picks up the loose change to go to Leonard. Drops it back to Manedian, who now gets it out of the zone. Both teams changing. How do the nerves feel down there, Colby? You can feel the tension right now. A little feeling out process to start this game. Everybody looking for a bump. Everybody looking for some body contact. Get you going early. And then you can kind of move on from there. Gustafson shoots. Bounces into the corner. 
Armstrong. Quick shot. Blocked. As Gossett's from the defenseman. And you can hear wheel, wheel, wheel. Head north, north, north. And that's what Denver does. They won the title in Boston in 2022. The Eagles' last title, 2012 in Tampa. This will be icing on the Pioneers. Well, look, we talked off the top about the neutral zone, about what Denver's looking to do. This plays right into their hands. Will Smith tries to beat two players. Webster makes a good play right on top of the blue line. And then Matica gets an opportunity so far in this game. Looking left, looking right at both benches. To me, Denver seems a little more calm, a little more cool and collected. But you got to expect that. They've got more experience in this type of moment. Denver. Quick line changes. They roll through all four. Yelvi shot just wide. A clean faceoff win from Cutter Goche. He is showing his all-around game in this all-around game in this tournament. He plays a 200-foot game, good on faceoffs, and of course he leads the nation in scoring. Yelvi Goche did not get off the Gasso hit the post. Wide open net for Gasso to open the scoring, but it hit the post as the puck comes outside the line. Goche kind of flubbed that one. But it went off the end boards right to Gasso, who had the yawning net. Yeah, Goche said he was going to score some goals, but just a fortuitous bounce off the back wall. Watch Gasso. He thinks he's got an empty net, just dunks it off the post. Hey, I'm sure Matt Davis will take that all night long. A little help from your buddies, but uh, quite an opportunity there for the big line with Goche, Gasso, and Yelvin. Healed it just a bit, and... And you're playing well like Matt Davis has, you get breaks. Yeah, maybe squeezing the stick a little too tight, little nerves early in this game. I mean, this is a huge comeback turnaround season for BC. They have not been here the last couple of years. Very crisp start, though. Both teams moving well. That puck deflected into the crowd for souvenir number one. You mentioned Boston College comes in on a heater. They've never won more games in program history. They have a 15 game winning streak. They had seven players on the world junior team that won gold and was coached by David Carl, the man on the other bench. Yeah, but yeah, I played against a couple of national champion Boston College teams when I was there. They won in my freshman year, they won in my junior year, and I gotta tell you, this team might be better than those teams, and, and I'm not saying that out of disrespect, but the skill level of this BC team is impressive. Chris passing, tipped in by Perot, and the four check is on. Booyam, beautiful little play by the 18-year-old, a clean breakout. However, the Eagles get it back, and here comes Leonard, Washington Capital first round pick. He has supplied Sports Center top 10 highlights in every tournament game so far. There's, there's that neutral zone clogged up. Make the play by Davis. Another clean breakout for the Pios, and here they come on the attack. First goal, so important. Rizzo, plenty of room. Here comes Barons to the net. Never got there. He comes outside the zone. I was so impressed with how Sean Barron's played the other night. To me, he was the best pioneer on the ice. Just a 200-foot game. He's a small guy, but he plays a tough game, and I'm sure the Avalanche can't wait to get him in their colors. It's going to be icing. Close to winning the race, but the Eagles get the call. Well, Butchie, you mentioned this on the breakout earlier by Denver. Watch the poise by Booyam from behind the net. Most defensemen just go around the wall there, up the yellow, but he's got the presence, the poise, and the patience to slip that into the middle. He's got good support, and that's some of the things that he does. It might fly under the radar, but his forwards certainly appreciate it. Goche, another face-off win. Hershock at the point, trying to find a lane. Try to go to Yelvi, who got by him, and here's Shy Booyam, Z Booyam's brother. He's been drafted by the Red Wings in the second round. Fowler puts it behind the cage, out of danger. Two top scoring teams in the nation. But Denver has really turned into a defensive juggernaut. But they have offensive talent to burn as it goes into the glove of Fowler. David Carl, what a start he is off to in his head coaching career. 
national championship already under his belt. World Junior Gold already on his resume. They did not play a 2-1 game all year. That's all they've played in the tournament thus far. Yeah, it just shows you how good of a tactician he is. His ability to make in-game adjustments as good as any coach at the at the NCAA level. I watch it from five feet away. When he changes his four checks or his neutral zones, his team gets going and they get going quickly. Seems like he's turned his team into Cornell. Defensive wagon. Boston College doesn't have a shot on goal yet. Of course, they did hit the post. That doesn't count as a shot on goal. Now the Pios have it. Seems like they feel very comfortable in this title game, as they usually are. One-timer hits the side of the net, and Joyce picks it up. His breakout pass goes over the stick of Gentry Schamberger. But the Eagles get it back as they make a line change. The freshman line back on the ice. Leonard give and go with Smith. Can't hand it, but Leonard's going to pick it up. To the net, blocked. Good block there by Kieran Sabrian. Leonard battles on the wall. We heard Sean Richland mention pregame. These older teams usually do well against the younger teams. Boston College trying to finish it off with their teenage line. Sabrian, it's a big heavy line for Denver. The kind of goal they want. Traffic in front of Fowler. Jared Wright, big boy. Rieger Lorenz, also a big boy. He's got the puck. Barron loses control, gets it back just in time. This is the kind of shift this line wants to have. Big, heavy tournament line. Yeah, you keep this Leonard line down in the defensive zone, that's obviously going to favor you. And you have this much skill on your back end with Booyam and Barron's. It just gives you more options and more opportunities to get that five-man offensive game going. And right now, it's been DU on top of BC early. Still no shots for Boston College, six and a half minutes in. Fowler leaves it for Manidian. He'll reverse it. Oh, turnover Malone, right in front, saved by Fowler. McCade Webster had a chance. But Fowler was there off the turnover. Ambrosio tries to chip it up too far. Another block shot. Armstrong picks it up. He's got some room. Nice pass to Hershock. Back to Armstrong. They got numbers behind the back pass. Oh, Ambrosio, excellent stick work as the puck is loose. Nice play. Lucas Olvestead there to get his stick on that shot. You got to be careful with those turnovers. The game is tight. There's tension. Mm. A big save by Fowler early in this first period. <laughs> These two teams met once during the regular season in Chestnut Hill, fourth game of the year for Boston College. Massimo Rizzo scored in the second. Connor Capone got another one in the third, a late power play goal. And the Pioneers, it's tough to travel east and win. They lost the next night to Providence, four to three, but this one felt good. And David Carl's tactics seem to be working so far, Colby. No shots on goal yet for the Eagles. Yeah, they're neutralizing that neutral zone. No pun intended. Doing a good job of breaking plays up, staying within their structure, and then the couple of opportunities when BC turned the puck over, they were able to pounce. They were able to quickly turn it into offense. But now we move into an offensive zone face-off situation, and now you got to think the high flyers are coming in, and they're going to try to run a play here. Greg Brown sends out the freshman line for the offensive zone faceoff. Last time they were pinned in their own end, so why not give them a head start? But Denver's able to get it out of the zone, and they have to start over 180 feet away. There's another turnover. That's another neutral zone turnover. Powell. Once again, BC hemmed in their own end. Denver off to a good start on their toes, looking for the first goal, which would really make it challenging. Perot looking to extend. Here comes Will Smith. Save Matt Davis. The entire Denver bench was screaming. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Not a quick enough reaction, though. Rose, the overtime hero, twice so far, rims it around. 
Rizzo throws it across. A bit too far for Bros, who has it back. In front, Rizzo! That was blocked in front. Fortescue saves the day. Championship effort from both sides in the early going in St. Paul. I seen BC. Well, the word right now coming from DU's bench is weak side. Watch weak side. And this is a great example why you turn a puck over up around the tops of the circles. Look how quick Will Smith gets to that weak side. And Gabe Perot, he's the facilitator of that group of the laser of a pass up to Smith. And that's a goal that we've seen Will Smith score quite often this year. So a big time save there by Matt Davis. First shot on goal for Boston College. Puck comes out, BC can change off the icy. William gets it in deep. Now the battle continues along the wall. Puck is loose. It's in the paint. The scrum continues. Where is it? And Fowler's able to cover it up. As Fortescue slowly rolled the puck back to his own goaltender to get the whistle. I think this is a smart move by the Pioneers. They need to create chaos around Fowler, the goaltender for BC. I do not think Michigan did enough of this the other night where they put bodies and pucks around the net, try to make Fowler a little bit more uncomfortable because if that man right there sees it, he's going to stop it. And a good look at the impressive freshman, Miko Matica, 20 goals for the Pioneers this season. Face off one. William shot, didn't get much shot, it fluttered over the net. Towards then it goes again. Body position, so important in this game. Time, time, time. Six shots, Denver. One for Boston College. Yelvi. On the wing with Goche. Up the wall it comes. Goche to the point. Gustafson. Two red hot teams. Goche! Oh, he's short side off the side of the net. Yelvik has it back. Back to Goche. Pops over a stick. And here comes Rieger Lorenz. End of his shift. He'll throw it in deep. Right is there. He'll be looking to change too. Sabrian's still out there. Rizzo off the top line is on the ice. Rizzo gets it. Big hard hit there by Gasso before he changes. First shot up. Armstrong, good body position. Fake shot. Malone kicks it. Looking to get to Ambrosio. He can't. Slapper wide. Hershuk had a chance and got a lot on that one. You love that as a defenseman when you can walk into one with your feet moving. If he puts that on the net, that's certainly going to be a difficult save. You do not want to feed the other team's breakout by missing far side like that. Malone, the overtime hero in Providence out there now. Three years at Cornell. Minetti and the defenseman has a lot of offensive flash to his game. Backhands it behind the net. BC's going to look to change. Yeah, I thought Manedian was the best defenseman for BC in the national semifinal game. He was all over the ice defensively. He had a great stick. Makes a good first pass just about every single time. Number seven with 17 for the Eagles. You'll want to keep an eye on him. Just the second time Denver will face a Hockey East team in the national title game. They beat Maine in 04. Posma. Off the stick of Booyam, high in the air, stays in play. Conservative play there by Powell. He had a room to go up and get that puck. Davis will cover up, face off in the Denver end. Denver enters on a season-long eight-game win streak. Boston College, 15 in a row. The national title game in St. Paul, Minnesota. The NCAA Frozen Four is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one. Denver last won it all in 2022. Barons, Booyam, Devine, King, Rizzo, and Webster all played in that Frozen Four. They're going for their 
10th national title. That would break a tie with Michigan. Smith shot! Big save by Davis off the faceoff. Seems like every offensive zone draw. Perot working his magic! Rebound! Two big saves by Davis! One on Perot, one on Smith as Leonard throws his man to the ice. Matt Davis is a wall right now. We talked about how good these guys are in traffic in the open, and you just saw a couple of highly skilled plays by a couple of highly skilled freshmen, and they certainly get it done in the tight areas. These two goalies playing the way they are, you almost can't imagine somebody scoring. That was Ooh. almost offside. It might have been. It might have been. Leonard poked away. Doesn't matter now as Matic skates it out. Turns it over, though, but then Perot can't control it. That was, that was called offside as Smith tried to touch up. ECAC official decides to blow the whistle. Here are those last couple of opportunities. Perot does a nice job staying on top of the puck. Good defensive body position for Perot leads to an offensive opportunity. Mm. And the ability to make those plays in tight goes around probably the best oh. defender, Sean Behrens, for this Pios team. You see why Chris Drury and company drafted Gabe Perot in the first round. This kid is a talent. Matt Davis, some big saves early on for Denver. Point blank chances. Now Jacob Fowler has to stay on his game as the Pioneers' offense goes to work against the Goche line. Yelvik Gasso, who hit the post earlier. That's a good job by Denver. Let those rushes be two on four. Make sure you're coming back through the middle. Don't give them odd man opportunities. I think that's what David Carl wants to see out of his bunch. Shy Booyam looks to get it out. Hit a stanchion, took a bad bounce, but fortunately, the Boston Buckberger. But there's Ambrosio. He's a dangerous player that can do some things. Good step. Hershock around the boards. Armstrong for checking. Whiffs on that attempt. Goes to the middle. Ambrosio. He gets it back. Cycles down low towards Malone and Armstrong. This is a heavy line for. Bo Boston College who can do some wall damage. Malone, nice crisp pass. Minetti show! Oh! Armstrong got a piece of that right in front. Just bounced wide. Matt Davis looked to be tracking that puck the whole time. I had a perfect sight line on that from between the benches. Denver has reached the Frozen Four in five of the last seven tournaments. They are on a program heater right now. Ambrosio. Will cycle towards the end of his shift. Connor Joyce from Dedham Mass out there. For the Eagles as it comes back to Hershaw. Divine with a four check. But Goche has it. Makes a nice move around Bros. And here comes Goche with some speed. Loses control, gets it back. Still has it. Drops to Yelvi. Yelvi sends it across hard to Gasso. Incomplete. <laughs> Nettie, a nice speed to Gochi. He's got away for the touch-up. As Gasso has it do so, he'll change. Devine, 27 goals on the air. Turnover. There's Powell. Defenseman. Good stick by Olestad again. Again, been a while since these two teams have lost. Denver, March 8th against barely missed the tournament this year and for BC it was the bean pot where they last lost against Boston University. Yeah with how dominant this season has been for Boston College hard to believe they didn't win the bean pot this year and really the same goes for the DU Pioneers they ran through that NCHC tournament they played big when it was late and Cutter Goche as he looks on you're looking for a little more out of him in this game he certainly was confident his goal scoring ability told us told Taylor Tannenbaum he was going to score a couple of goals tonight, so we'll see what he brings. Denver struggled in defensive zone faceoffs against BU. To get that one out, though, after losing the last one. Yes, Cutter Goche very confident before the game, talking to our Taylor Tannenbaum, trying to visualize his success and his team's success. Here's Barron. He can really wheel. His pass picked off there by Perot, who's off to a good start tonight. 34 seems to be moving well. And the Piles are set back in that 1-2-2 two, two, as Davis will play it now. Nice play by the goaltender to Barons, And here come 
The Pioneers looking to get back on the offensive track. But getting a little dry in that part for them lately as Perot makes a beautiful move. Tries to double dangle Barons, can't do it. Quick passing just onside to Perot who gets it in deep. Cosma the hit. And Wright looks to get it out. This line had a good shift earlier for Denver. Shamberg is going to get it in deep and change. That's another good breakout pass by Matt Davis. BC's got to keep the puck away from Davis. Right now, he's like a third defenseman back there moving puck. Tristan Lemire's out there, scored that big old play to the high stick for Denver, but Boston College touched it. Booyam off the wall, behind the net. Open man in front. Lemire's there. They can't find him. Got just his second goal of the year. Tristan Lemire did. Against Boston University. Long pass off. This will be icing on Denver. Before the game, Cutter Gauthier with our Taylor Tannenbaum. What do you anticipate this rematch on this championship stage to be like tonight? It's going to be epic. There's going to be a lot of emotions, um, you know, and a lot of tears for that team over there. So uh, we're happy and we're excited to get after it. All righty then. <laughs> and he's taking the face off. See who's crying at the end of this national championship game. Certainly not lacking in the confidence no. department. Gasso looks to go to Gauthier. Off escape. Hershock. Manedian. Yelvik. Hershock. Manedian wide. He didn't have a shooting lane. That's played with a high stick by BC, and then Gauthier high stick. touches it. Outside. So the faceoff will come outside the Denver zone. Time to sh shovel here in St. Paul. We are in the state of hockey and a championship state of mind. Welcome back to the Frozen Four, joined now by Denver head coach David Carl. Coach, you held BC's offense in check so so far. What have you seen? Yeah, I think we're we're doing a pretty good job of, of angling. I think our best shifts have been when we're possessing the puck. That's when we're at the least risk of their offense. And so we'd like to get back to hanging on to some more pucks in the ozone like we did the first seven, eight minutes. They've had a push back here. They're very dangerous. Um, we need to get back in there and a little bit more. How do you get back to those first seven, eight minutes offensively? Well, I think we've had the puck and, and we're, we're starting to throw it away a little bit. We have time to skate with it up the ice. We need to possess it, trust ourselves to skate when we get it on our stick. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Of course, Bill Belichick was always given the reputation of no matter what the opponent was, his game plan changed. David Carl seems to have that ability, Colby, to be a tactical head coach. Whatever the blueprint to win is, he'll do it. Yeah, he'll do it, and his players listen and respond and one thing he said to Taylor he talked about the angles when we showed in the open that one two two that first four checker angling towards the wall incredibly important and incredibly impactful at cutting the ice in half so interesting he told me something similar before the game so his message with Taylor stays right on brand see Booyam dumps it in now see if they can get some of that offensive zone possession time that he told Taylor about. This is their chance here. No shots in the last five minutes for the Pios. Here's Armstrong. Dumps it to space for Ambrosio. Malone layers up, but here come the Pios. Three on two if they hurry. Well, wow, just out of the reach of Matica. William was jumping there. He would have been the, F, the third attacker. Keep an eye on Z. William. He's an electric defenseman, the freshman. Ambrosio now protecting. One of those experienced Eagles players they'll need in a game like this. Good anticipation by Shai Booyam, and he'll change. Make that Webster with a nice turnover by the Pioneers. Powell will start behind his own net. Denver won their first national championship in the state of hockey in 1958. Today, they're trying to win their 10th, which would be the most ever. Come the Eagles, they have really six swift skating defensemen, all very mobile. Turn over there as they try to find Will Smith on that weak side. Here comes Devine, hasn't scored in a couple of games. On the heels of Manedian. Manedian will stop, make a nice reverse pass to Hershock, and here come the Eagles. Off the skip, this will be icing on Leonard. 
Hey, don't miss the post-game trophy ceremony here on ESPN2 and ESPN Plus following the game. And for more information on all 90 NCAA championships, go to NCAA.com. The trophy presentation here on ESPN2 and then continued on ESPN Plus as they award the national championship trophy today. He's a beaut, Clark. <laughs> Kobe won his in 2009 with his overtime goal against Miami University in Washington, D.C. Will Smith will track it down and slap it in and Gabriel Perot. But look, they keep putting the puck on Matt Davis's stick. That helps Denver break out so much easier as Bankston makes a nice stick play in the neutral zone. But I got to think that's something Greg Brown's going to talk to about BC because when you continually to put the puck into an area for Matt Davis, he's going to be that third defenseman and start the Denver breakout. Greg Brown, the coach of the year, awarded on Wednesday. Second year coach, a 19 win improvement over his first year last year. Powered, of course, by the all freshman line and the return of Goche. And the Fowler as well in that. Here comes Yelchin. Oh, oh, Turned away nicely. Oh, Goche, big save again by Davis. Goche has it again. Whiffs. And Barron's the defenseman has it. Sauces it over to Lorenz. Puck bounces, and here comes Gauthier again. Surrounded by four pioneers, still has it. Another good stick play by Booyam. The Booyam brothers are out there. If they're going to beat this goaltender, Colby, I think they're going to have to go upstairs because you're not going to beat this dude low. No. Matt Davis is a futon right now. He's been absolutely dialed low, and look how quick Gauthier is able to get that shot off. He does not need a lot of room for him to pull it in and just get one towards the net, but you're right. B, you couldn't score low against Davis, and right now, Cutter Goche and his squad having a difficult time solving the goaltender for the Pio. Ambrosio, back to Fortescue, looking for a lane, can't find it. Excellent job up top. Austin Collins has the last four shots on goal. Malone digging. It's chipped out by towards Fortescue. Up to Malone. Connor Capone. Didn't play in the 22 Frozen Four that Denver won, but he was on the team as Armstrong has it. He's looking across. Has the man. Malone. Up comes out of the Denver zone and right back in again by Malone. Fowler can't quite stop that. Devine has it, looking for a wraparound maybe, but good recovery there by the Eagles and Hershuk, who goes to Armstrong. Jack Devine, we mentioned 27 goals, 56 points during the regular season, no points in the tournament yet. Yeah, he's been quiet the last couple of weeks. Teams have been physical on him, and I think it's given him a difficult time getting between the dots into the scoring area. He's got a great release if he can get one off. Rizzo just wide as Leonard looks up at the clock to see how much time was left. He sees that there's 10 seconds. They got to hurry. Smith got to shoot it. He does, but a nice block shot by Sean Barons. And the first period comes to an end as the teams exchange a couple pokes to the grills. Denver, no shots in the final eight minutes and 37 seconds. But they get out of the first period against the nation's highest scoring team, scoreless. I definitely think David Carl will be happy yeah. with that first period. I don't think anything was called there at the end. The officials letting these things go. Let the Ouch. emotions ride a little. The shot by Perot on Barons. I'll say it again. I think Barons is underrated. I thought he was their best player the other night. And he will be facing those top players all night, Pucci. Well, we're off to a championship start, especially in net. After 20, we are scoreless in St. Paul. Arda, back to you. Welcome back to the State of Hockey and the National Championship game. 
on ESPN2. No better place to hold our national championship for men's ice hockey than this land of 10,000 lakes, sometimes frozen, now thawed. No score after 20 minutes. The legend of Matt Davis continues to grow in Denver. Dude is red hot, 97% save percentage. Jacob Fowler also has been perfect so far. Nothing's gotten by him at this year's Frozen Four. Colby, no surprise that Mark Carl has a deep respect for Boston College's offense. He coached seven of their players at the World Junior, so you can imagine why he respects them. Yeah, we talked about how David Carl is a big-time tactician. He knows how to make in-game adjustments, and the way this team came out, the Pioneers, it forced a lot of turnovers early. It gave them opportunities to have the puck and play with momentum, and this comes from discipline in the neutral zone by the Pios. They stay within their structure they stay above the puck and that led to a couple of opportunities early now as this period rolled along you could see some of the big boys from bc they start to wake up perot had a couple opportunities smith had a couple of opportunities and this game started to be a little bit more even in the second half so greg brown and company they've got the skill they've got the high flyers and when you look across the way at the other team it's a little bit more about the tactician bushy you can see that BC a slight edge in scoring chances. Shots attempted. Top two lines starting against each other here in the second period. Denver's four national titles since 2000 tied with Boston College for the most. So the winner today will have early bragging rights a quarter into the 21st century as the team of the century. Here we go, period number two. The longer this remains scoreless, the more important that first goal becomes. That hit the stick of Opayo's player on the bench who was leaning over the bench. No penalties in the first. That's also a key, Colby. Yeah, you got to stay out of the box against Boston College. They're special teams on both sides. Power play, penalty kill. It's as good as anybody at this level. But another important thing to think about, when you look at the contrast of styles, and you look how BC likes to use the weak side of the ice, you're on the long change now. So if you're a defenseman, you've got to make sure you're changing at 100% speed. And if it's close, stay on the ice. Don't feed the transition. Turnover, and here comes Denver trying to pounce. Goche loses control after exiting the zone. Here comes Bros. Kind of got sticky there. We see moments of sticky ice here in this frozen floor. That happens. Players fan on passes and shots. Bros will try again. Here's Devine. Panthers seventh round pick. Fowler can't stop it. Devine gets to it. Tasted by Minetti, and he's going to give it away to the point. Z Booyam rips it across. Shot tip just over the net. Dangerous opportunity there. Another quick shot. Oh, and Fowler. That was heading right for his mouth. And he stuck his glove up in front of his face to make the save. Look on this first opportunity that Denver just had. Barron's up at the point. He waited. He didn't shoot right away. He held it and he held it and he waited for Devine to get his stick down to the ice. That's a heads up play by Sean Barron's just for that extra poise. And then that leads to the second opportunity by Lorenz out in the slot. But Sean Barrett continues to play well for the Pios. You don't necessarily notice all that he does, but big time plays. Bouillon blocks. Sabrian won that faceoff. He's the best faceoff guy on the team. And here comes Smith. Watch out from behind. He gets it out to Leonard. Leonard's been a little quiet so far as that sticks it over the netting into the crowd. Let's go back to the semifinal game. This was early by Sean Barron's, the second round pick by the Avs, stepping up on Macklin Celebrini early, setting the tempo for the Pioneers in this hockey game. He played 27 minutes, and they were all minutes against Macklin Celebrini tonight. He draws Smith's line. If it's not Smith, it's Goche. So tall orders for number two in red. Will Smith, the freshman, wins the faceoff. He has a six-point scoring lead in the nation. Shot! Yeah, just off the toe of Davis. Another Leonard shot. Another deflection. And another souvenir. Taylor Tenenbaum 
with us tonight. Taylor. Denver assistant coach Dallas Ferguson really liked their start. He said the first period was good to get those nerves out. He said now it's time to get to our game. They're looking for more opportunities to possess the puck and he says to play faster in the neutral zone. Bucci. In the freshman line stays out for his offensive zone faceoff. I imagine Colby's going to want Smith or Goche out there for all of these. Oh, absolutely. Every time he gets an opportunity, you're not saving anybody. There's no tomorrow at this juncture. So you're going to see a lot of his line and Goche's line when they give him those starts in the offensive zone. But the 22 year old Thompson wins the faceoff from the 19 year old Smith. There's a good opportunity for Denver to possess more pucks. Both coaches, David Carl, Dallas Ferguson, Cole Taylor, Tannenbaum, they want to get to their game, and part of their game is having poise with the puck, holding it down below the tops of the circles, looking to generate offense off the cycle, off the walls. They've been very effective at it this season. Pioneers have 11 players that have scored 10 or more goals this season. Nine skaters that have registered 30 or more points, both by far the most by a program in college hockey this season. They have depth. See Booyam, the defenseman out there, number 28. You see him right there. One of the best rookie campaigns in Denver history. Leads the team with 38 assists. Second in scoring with 49 points. Again, he was 17 when the season started. He's a huge talent, number 28. Shot. Blocker save on front. Oh, Ambrosio! Smell the glove. Matt Davis with another save. Well, Butchie, you said you wanted to see them look to go high against Matt Davis, but he just continues to be up to Ooh. the test. Not a good rebound by Davis. You do not want to blocker that puck directly out into the slot. Give Colby Ambrosio credit. He's ready to shoot, but look how Davis re-squares his feet. He gets out, calm in the butterfly, and is able to glove that and bring that into his body. And one of his goalie partners standing right next to me looks on. I think he likes what he sees. <laughs> Gives me a little head shake. Yeah, he's got a good seat. Give him a microphone. <laughs> well, that's him yelling weak side, weak side. When you hear that in my headset, that's coming right from the DU bench, right from the goaltender. That's obviously part of the game plan. Freddie Halleck next to you. Kid from Alberta. Oh, you know Barry would have loved him. Oh, yeah. Loves those Alberta boys. This is going to be icing if the race is won by BC, and it was. We mentioned David Carr was the head coach of the U.S. World Junior Team this year. They won the gold medal. And there were seven Boston College Eagles on that team that David Carl got to know and really has a bond for life. It's an interesting aspect of this Frozen Four that he'll always have memories with these players he's coached for and now coaches against in the title game. Well, he certainly knows their tendencies, and it's very unique how this sport has a tournament in the middle of the year for the best players, and they take a college coach. But it is not always where you see seven players from one team participating. So it just tells you the talent on this Boston College roster. And there's Goche. Of course, he was the leading scorer on that team. Not a lot of goals in the tournament, but a lot of assists. A good playmaker in that tournament as the U.S. beat Sweden in Sweden. Hershock rims it around. Denver's changing. That gives the Eagles some room to clear out. Gasso, who hit the post in the first, miscommunicates with Manedian. And now the piles almost had a two on one. Now the BC Eagles in transition the other way. Rips it across towards Gasso. And now Denver. We haven't seen much up and down action like that, Colby. Yeah, the Booyah brothers out on the ice together right now. So a little shuffling of the D pairs. Goche off the side of the net. Has it back again. Off the Denver skate and down the ice. Uh, here comes Shy Booyam. He was actually caught out there. We noted that long change, especially the way BC likes to attack the weak side. Room for Leonard. Here comes Leonard. Say to the chest of Matt Davis. Quick chest. We mentioned the Booyam brothers. Older brother Shy. Second round pick of Detroit. Zeeb, 17 when the year began. He turned 18 years old on December the 7th. He'll be a top pick in the NHL draft this summer. 
Yeah, both of these two absolute studs. They go about it a little bit differently. Zeeb likes to hang on to the puck more shy, a little bit more of a first pass, get up the ice type of guy. But both of these kids, they're destined for the NHL. Look at the speed of Jared Wright. He can really wheel. Barron's can't quite keep it in. Perot, good stick check by Barron's to recover. And now he's onside. And here comes Denver on the attack. Barron's rips it. Kick saved by Fowler. Good rebound, but Puyam has it. He shakes him base. Right. This line's been good for Denver in this game. Loren shot saved by Fowler. Box out by Leonard. Trying to draw a penalty. Stick stuck in his armpit. He pinned it there. This is going to be icing on BC as Leonard asked for a holding penalty or a hooking penalty. And this line for BC, they've been caught out on the ice for a little bit of an extended shift. Taking a look over at the BC bench, maybe they're thinking about a timeout. There's the nice little pop-out play to Lorenz, moves over about four feet, finds that soft area between Leonard and the defense, but a great opportunity here for Denver against the tired Will Smith line. Dangerous line, Thompson, Matica, and McCade Webster out there. All double-digit goals this year, but it's Perot who gets it out, pinned against the boards, and he'll change as he loses his stick. Powell, swift skating defenseman number two. Bouncing puck, turned it over. Here's Webster. Flash it from behind. He'll collapse to the ice, and there's going to be a penalty here on Posma. Likely a two-minute call, going to be boarding. The referees are getting together to talk about it. They can go in and review to see if they want to eject. Boston College number 12, two minutes, boarding. Now here's the options for David Carl. He can challenge this to look for five. And here's a good look at it right here. See Posma push Webster in from behind. He does stop moving his feet, so it's not a charge. He certainly does push him in from the back, so it's going to be up to David Carl. If he wants to challenge this for five, and he's wrong, he only loses a timeout. He isn't given a two-minute minor. On the second one, that's when a two-minute minor would be assessed. And I'm looking at the Denver bench as Webster get up. And as of now, I haven't seen... The coaching staff looking like they're going to throw that challenge flag. Yep. Well, there's no need to complain. If just challenge it, if you feel that it can be changed, but that timeout can be valuable. And you do have a two-minute power play. The coaches are talking right now. Doesn't look like they're going to challenge it, which I think is probably the right decision. I don't think that looked to me like it would be a five-minute penalty. That's a close one. It really is. Yeah, they're all close like that. It's, But it's a power play for Denver and a big opportunity for the Pios to strike first. They're out shooting Boston College 12 to 8. Face off controlled by Denver and they're on the attack. Barons to Rizzo. Good stick by Armstrong. And it comes out of the zone. Devine's out there. Thompson's out there. Here comes Rizzo. Best PK unit in the country is Boston College. They all they score, but they also defend in front. Thompson has it, not quite ready to fire it. Reason for Barron, he's got room. Great chance for the Pios to strike first. Rizzo to Barron. Looking. Jacob Fowler, the last line of defense, the goaltender. A big reason why Boston College has the best penalty kill in the country. Barron fakes the shot. Thompson. Carter King on top of the crease, number 15. Across, Shay Fowler didn't get much on that good stick by Boston College. Hershick with a good stick. Armstrong tries to chip it up, he can't do it. Good play along the wall. An Indian can't get it out. And then King flips it out, and BC hard to change in the second period of a PK. They need a clear and a change. They're gonna get it here. Three of the four are able to change. Hershuck stays out. Some fresh skaters for the Pios are out there now. Sam Harris on the ice. Comes towards him. Rose throws it towards the net. Turnover in front. Another good stick by Hershuck. Fire! 
block shot. Puck is loose and out. What an effort by Aiden Hershuk. Yeah, you see why this Boston College penalty kills rank number one. The stick position, taking away seams, the willingness to block shots. And they're going to kill this penalty. Hosma's on his feet. The door is open, and we're back to five on five. See if that gives Denver some momentum by tasting some scoring chances. Despite not getting a shot on goal, they had room and opportunities. Goche's out there now. He's got some room to move. He's got Perot with him. And Leonard, a little different formation here, coming off the PK. Goche does have one shorthanded goal this year. That's one reason why he would be out there in a shorthanded situation. Long pass up to Goche. Leaves it for Perot. Gabriel Perot. Fires in front. Smith looking to redirect that chance. Gustafson, the aggressive pinch. Now he'll retreat. And Lorenz able to get it out. Sabrian after it, but it's one on three as the Pioneers change. He's looking for help off the bench. Just wide. Capone ripped it wide. Fowler was screened on that shot. I had a perfect sight line on it, and I was screened on seeing that shot. So if that one gets towards the net, that could be trouble. But when you want to win this time of year, these are the types of sacrifices. That goes right off the back of the foot for Hershuk. That absolutely kills your foot. Not a lot of padding there. That puck is moving at a high pace. And Aiden Hershuk is gonna feel that one come tomorrow. Hopefully for him, it's a happy feeling. Interesting line here. Smith, Yelvik, Ambrosio. Something a little different. Haven't seen that line in the tournament. Yeah, things a little bit juggled right now coming yep. off that penalty kill. I think Craig Brown wants to keep all his guys in the yep. game. Manedian gets it in. Davis rims it around hard. It's going to be icing on the goalie. <laughs> Don't see that often. And we talked about the puck handling ability from Matt Davis. He acts as a third defenseman. You want to keep the puck away from him. He's good at making that first pass, having the opportunity to clear the zone. That one goes a little bit too far, but you can see the strength that he has with the puck on his stick. Look at those numbers. Those are championship numbers. Denver couldn't change. Boston College opted to. Face off one by Malone. Gustafson loves it. Now we'll have to go retreat it. Chop it back towards Armstrong. He's bothered from behind by King. Gustafson turns away. We mentioned all six of these defensemen for BC can really skate well. And both these teams are filled with wonderful skaters. Slaps at the covered puck. We're approaching midway through this championship game. The red light is yet to come on because of Jacob Fowler and Matt Davis. Josh Bellow of Needham, Massachusetts, lives with a kidney disorder. Holds a special place in the hearts of BC hockey players, part of the Team Impact program. He's in attendance tonight. He and the Eagles have been connected since 2019. Cole, well, you saw him before the game. Yeah, you know what? Maybe a future politician, because I asked <laughs> the little guy, who is your favorite player on the Boston College Eagles? He looked at me and said, I don't have a favorite. I love them all. What a diplomatic answer from the young man. Great to see him. Such a great program, that team impact program. Just signing a little kid like that. With some tough challenges, showing a lot of grit and courage. Not easy going through something like that. This gives them a little respite to be part of a team, get a lot of encouragement from these heroes. Well done by all. Here comes Gasso and Yelby. Boston College offense has been stifled. Only eight shots on goal. Denver's game plan working to a tee. We figured if they were going to win this game, it was going to be a 2-1 type of game. Maybe it's going to be 1-0. This is a 
tight checking, intense affair with two very well skating teams. Man down. Hershuk screaming for a penalty, doesn't get it. Keep diving. Here's the keep diving call from the Denver bench. <laughs> you gotta think, the longer this game stays 0-0, the more Denver is comfortable in these types of moments. It's been... Yelvik! Oh, what a save! Rebound! Oh, Goche just why? That's how quick BC <laughs> can strike, Kobe. Menedian looking around the boards. Yelvik's had a strong game, number 21. And a good regional in Providence. Leaves it for Powell. Shot almost under the armpit of Davis. And he squeezes it. Boston College, just as we said, they were stifled, Colby. They get three chances. Look, Denver has been phenomenal in the neutral zone, but all it takes is an inch for these guys to hook up on a primetime scoring opportunity. Gasso looking, excuse me, Yelvik finding Gasso. They find that second wave of attack. That's where they can be dangerous. They might not get you on the first part of the rush, but then that second wave gets between the back check and the defenseman. And when they hit plays like that, you're gonna see great A opportunities. Denver's been the better face-off team so far. And they do it again. Part of the game that they need to excel in, and they're doing it so far. Lorenz, down low, shot right, off the post of 10, score! Garen Wright! The first time Jacob Fowler has been scored against since the Quinnipiac game, 16 seconds into the third. one nothing. Pioneers! Well, you want to play from in front against this Boston College Eagles team. And look at the fortuitous bounce that Jared Wright get. He turns his feet in order to find himself a little bit of a better shooting angle. And Fowler gets a little bit misaligned. It goes off the post. He gets the lucky bounce and into the net. And look, that Denver bench erupted. The coaching staff yelling at the players. Guys, relax. It's the first goal, but the excitement uncontainable by the Pio. Off the post, off the nameplate, into the net. And Wright has a turnover. Here they come again. Sabrina over the net. Buckberger. The cycle. Wright, the goal scorer. Block never got there. Lorenz shot. Save. Fowler. And Denver scores the all-important first goal midway through the hockey game. Just after BC had three golden chances. Here comes Fortescue. Fires in front. Oh, looking for the redirection to Ambrosio. Can't quite connect. It's going to take a high-level passing play or off the post and off the back to beat these goalies. They are on their game. Powell in front. Nice play in front by Thompson and real nifty pass to Matica. Here comes Matica. Thompson wants it. He can fly. Here he comes around the net. Good defense there by the Eagles and Ambrosio. Wide open. Tee it up. High and wide. Webster with a good chance. Pace is picking up. What a prime example of a clean breakout by Aiden Thompson. And then that leads to 40 seconds of offense for the Pios. Three wide again. Nifty redirection. Saved by Fowler as King looking for the net. Offense picking up here in the national championship game. We wondered who was going to strike first. Lorenz over to right. The bumper. DU leads. Welcome back to the Frozen Four. Right now, Denver up 1-0. Joined now by BC head coach Greg Brown. Coach, you've had chances offensively. How do you continue to generate more? Yeah, we got to keep our feet moving. I thought we had a few great chances in the first, and then the first half of the second was solid. We had a good penalty kill. Then we slowed down a little bit, didn't get our keep our feet moving, so they took some momentum, but then we had a good shift, so we got to build on that. What's your message to your guys on the bench right now? Uh, we're fine. We just got to keep the, get the tempo back up and keep playing here. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. 
They are a confident, calm bunch led by their coach. We talked to Ryan Leonard after a period in Providence, Colby and I, and Ryan Leonard's like, we're not worried, everything's fine. I'm sure if we had a mic on him now, he'd probably say the same thing. And look, I think they earn that type of confidence yep. throughout the season. They've gone wire to wire as one of the top teams in the nation. And Greg Brown, who's been with Boston College as long as I can remember in different roles as an associate head coach for years, is, is that's his personality and his bench will feed off that type of calm presence. And of course, Greg Brown sat down with him and David Carl yesterday and Brown was trying to recruit David Carl <laughs> to come to BC to play defense. He ended up going to Denver, then of course had to retire from hockey because of a heart abnormality. Wasn't sure what was going to happen. Got into coaching just to kind of stay in the game. They honored his scholarship. And now here he is, one of the best young coaches in America with a national championship and a gold medal already on his resume. Three on three. Barron's the defenseman. And Booyam the defenseman. Nice strip by Will Smith. He's got a really good stick. This will be icing on BC. First goal for Jared Wright since March the 9th, by the way. But yeah, interesting yesterday, Greg Brown telling us that he tried to recruit David Carl. David Carl was a good defenseman in his day. We played against each other in the USA Hockey Select Festivals, all coming up the way through. It was unfortunate that he had to deal with the health issue yep. that he did. But look, he certainly has made the best fit. He worked yep. under Jim Montgomery. I think Monty definitely blessed the hire, and mm -hmm. he's been off and running. He was an assistant on that national championship team in 2017 in Chicago. Shattuck St. Mary product, so he was definitely a, a D1 prospect. Oren Coolis and the Tampa Bay Lightning did a cool thing and drafted him in the seventh round of the NHL draft after he realized he couldn't play. This is a gesture. That's what people think of David Carl, his brother Matt, a legend, two time national champion and Hobie Baker winner. 1 0 Denver. Great day of hockey here on ABC and the SBM2. Already two NHL games in the books. One more to go. Oh boy! Are we going to make it 2 0? Nico! What a save by Fowler! Robbing Wright, who would have got his second of the game. What a big time save by Jacob Fowler and Schamberger. Number 14 for Boston College is unable to handle that puck. It just rolls off his stick. Fowler gets the stick out for the poke check to not give Wright the opportunity to deke to the backhand, all while doing a nice job. Watch how quick he closes those five hole. Man, he is a smooth goaltender, that Jacob Fowler. Quick shot, blocks just wide on the deflection. So Wright hadn't scored since March the 9th. Then he almost hadn't scored in 10 minutes. He's had a good frozen four. He was good against BU, noticeable, and he's been very noticeable here with Sabrian and Lorenz. Yeah, you really notice him on the four check. He recovers pucks well, physical. Matica, don't give him room to shoot. He can wire at number 10. Here he is, locked and loaded. Never got there. Down to the ice, Denver wants a hold. They don't get it. Here comes Barons with room and momentum. Looking, looking, loses control again. He gets taken down. Yelvi trying to get the Gasso, can't. Schamberger needs to change, get to Goche on the ice, and now here comes Goche. Rizzo stepped up by Yelvi, and alone Thompson, saved by Fowler. The last eight to ten minutes of this hockey game has been all Denver. Look at them creating offense off the faceoff. So important in these one and dones. The goal way back actually came off of a faceoff win as well. And here's the last save. Fowler had to look for this one just a little bit, but his positioning out on top of the crease, he just always seems to be in the right spots. So much pressure on Jacob Fowler now, not to allow that second goal. Gasso sends it in. Yelvik on the forecheck with Gasso, who fathered. Ooh, Yelvik awkwardly goes to the boards.
Rizzo, nice little one-touch breakout pass. Here comes the vine. Gets it in deep. They don't want those turnovers at the blue line. Baller can't get it by. Almost a hand pass. That's why the safe sign from our referee. Goje gives it right up. Not a good play. Throws the turnover, but Goje gets it right back again. Powell wants it. Powell gets it. The defenseman has some room. He'll get it in. Goche to one more four check here. He'll leave it. But Gasso's changing. Here come the Pio. Shot wide. Body's starting to fly on the ice here. Five minutes left in the second period. Almost just caught a butt end of the nose from mm. Shai Bouillon when he was changing. Lorenz across. Gustafson steps up. And Ambrosio layers the defense to get the puck out. Very long shift for Goche. Z Bouillon, you know he wants to help out the squad. What a play! Bouillon scores! the magic of 18-year-old C. Booyam. He made that happen. And Lorenz, the Minnesota Wild second round pick in Minnesota, gets his 16th of the year. Well, I just cannot overstate this play by Z. Booyam. The patience one on two. That is what elite defensemen do. They draw one, they draw two. You get a little puck watching, they slip it, and that's what Booyam does. The perfect little slip pass to Lorenz, and Lorenz doesn't dust it off. He puts that thing right up and into the corner of the net. Fowler has no time whatsoever to react. But elite players like Z Booyam, they draw lots of attention, and the good ones know when to slip it. I mean, it's the skating, it's the hockey sense, but did you see that backhand pass? It was on the sweet spot. Lorenz just had to rip it. Letty shot wide. Now, Boston College is down two. Unfamiliar territory. Denver beat BC in the fourth game of the year at their place. Boston College wants revenge, but now they're down two late in the second against a very hot goaltender. Nifty play Smith has it now from Leonard. Here's Perot. He attacks between the legs. Perot can't finish. He gets pulled down. Nothing called. Play continues. Another eagle to the ice. Multiple trying to draw that penalty. You know they want a power play. Tendons rising, skill showing. Gabe Perot trying to get his team back in this hockey game. Welcome back to the Frozen Four. Right now, Denver up 1-0. Joined now by BC head coach Greg Brown. Coach, you've had chances offensively. How do you continue to generate more? Yeah, we got to keep our feet moving. I thought we... Had a few great chances in the first, and then the first half of the second was solid. We had a good penalty kill, then we slowed down a little bit, didn't get our keep our feet moving, so they took some momentum, but then we had a good shift, so we got to build on that. What's your message to your guys on the bench right now? Uh, we're fine. We just got to keep the, get the tempo back up and keep playing here. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. They are a confident, calm bunch led by their coach. We talked to Ryan Leonard after a period in Providence, Colby and I and Ryan Leonard's like, we're not worried, everything's fine. I'm sure if we had a mic on him now, he'd probably say the same thing. And look, I think they earned that type of confidence yep. throughout the season. They've gone wire to wire as one of the top teams in the nation. And Greg Brown, who's been with Boston College as long as I can remember in different roles as an associate head coach for years, is, is that's his personality and his bench will feed off that type of calm presence. And of course, Greg Brown sat down with him and David Carl yesterday, and Brown was trying to recruit David Carl <laughs> to come to BC to play defense. He ended up going to Denver, then of course had to retire from hockey because of a heart abnormality. Wasn't sure what was going to happen. Got into coaching just to kind of stay in the game. They honored his scholarship, and now here he is, one of the best young coaches in America, with a national championship and a gold medal already on his resume. Three on three. Barron's the defenseman, and Booyam the defenseman. 
Nice strip by Will Smith. He's got a really good stick. This will be icing on BC. First goal for Jared Wright since March the 9th, by the way. But yeah, interesting yesterday, Greg Brown telling us that he tried to recruit David Carl. David Carl is a good defenseman in his day. We played against each other in the USA Hockey Select Festivals, all coming up the way through. It was unfortunate that he had to deal with the health issue yep. that he did, but look, he certainly has made the best fit. He worked yeah. under Jim Montgomery. I think Monty definitely blessed the hire, and mm -hmm. he's been off and running. He was an assistant on that national championship team in 2017 in Chicago. Shattuck St. Mary product, so he was definitely a, a D1 prospect. Oren Coolis and the Tampa Bay Lightning did a cool thing and drafted him in the seventh round of the NHL draft after he realized he couldn't play. This is a gesture. That's what people think of David Carl, his brother Matt, a legend, two time national champion and Hobie Baker winner. 1 0 Denver. Great day of hockey here on ABC and ESPN2. Already two NHL games in the books. One more to go. Oh, boy! Are we going to make it 2 nothing? Miko, what a save by Fowler! Robbing Wright, who would have got his second of the game. What a big-time save by Jacob Fowler and Schamberger. Number 14 for Boston College is unable to handle that puck. It just rolls off his stick. Fowler gets the stick out for the poke check to not give Wright the opportunity to deke to the backhand all while doing a nice job. Watch how quick he closes those five hole. Man, he is a smooth goaltender, that Jacob Fowler. Quick shot, blocks just wide on the deflection. So Wright hadn't scored since March the 9th. Then he almost hadn't scored in 10 minutes. He's had a good frozen four. He was good against BU, noticeable, and he's been very noticeable here with Sabrian and Lorenz. Yeah, you really notice him on the four check. He recovers pucks well, physical. Matica, don't give him room to shoot. He can wire it. Number 10, here he is, locked and loaded. Never got there. Down to the ice, Denver wants a hold. They don't get it. Here comes Barons with room and momentum. Looking, looking, loses control again. He gets taken down. Yelvi trying to get the Gasso, can't. Schamberger needs to change, get to Goche on the ice, and now here comes Goche. Rizzo stepped up by Yelvi, and alone Thompson, saved by Fowler. The last eight to ten minutes of this hockey game has been all Denver. Look at them creating offense off the faceoff. So important in these one and dones. The goal way back actually came off of a faceoff win as well. And here's the last save. Fowler had to look for this one just a little bit, but his positioning out on top of the crease, he just always seems to be in the right spots. So much pressure on Jacob Fowler now, not to allow that second goal. Gasso sends it in. Yelvik on the four check with Gasso, who fathers. Ooh, Yelvik awkwardly goes into the boards. Rizzo, nice little one-touch breakout pass. Here comes the vine. Gets it in deep. They don't want those turnovers at the blue line. Fowler can't get it by. Almost a hand pass. That's why the safe sign from our referee. Goche gets it right up. Not a good play. Throws the turnover, but Goche gets it right back again. Powell wants it. Powell gets it. The defenseman has some room. He'll get it in. Goche to one more four check here. He'll leave it. But Gasso's changing. Here come the Pio. Shot wide. Body's starting to fly on the ice here. Five minutes left in the second period. Almost just caught a butt end of the nose from mm. Shai Booyam when he was changing. Lorenz across. Gustafson steps up. And Ambrosio layers the defense to get the puck out. Very long shift for Goche. Z Booyam, you know he wants to help out the squad. What a play! Booyam scores! Lorenz! And that's the magic! Of 18-year-old Steve Booyam. He made that happen. And Lorenz 
the Minnesota Wild second round pick in Minnesota gets his 16th of the year. Well, I just cannot overstate this play by Z Booyah. The patience one on two. That is what elite defensemen do. They draw one, they draw two. You get a little puck watching, they slip it, and that's what Booyah does. The perfect little slip pass to Lorenz, and Lorenz doesn't dust it off. He puts that thing right up and into the corner of the net. Fowler has no time whatsoever to react. But elite players like Zeev Booyam, they draw lots of attention, and the good ones know when to slip it. I mean, it's the skating, it's the hockey sense, but did you see that backhand pass? It was on the sweet spot. Lorenz just had to rip it. Letty shot wide. Now, Boston College is down two. Unfamiliar territory. Denver beat BC in the fourth game of the year at their place. Boston College wants revenge, but now they're down two late in the second against a very hot goaltender. Nifty play Smith has it now from Leonard. Here's Perot. He attacks between the legs. Perot can't finish. He gets pulled down. Nothing called. Play continues. Another eagle to the ice. Multiple trying to draw that penalty. You know they want a power play. Tensions rising, skill showing. Gabe Perot trying to get his team back in this hockey game. The NCAA Frozen Four is brought to you by Lowe's. Lowe's knows home improvement. Right from Lorenz and Bouillon. Lorenz from Bouillon and Barons. Here they are. Yeah, the Denver Pioneers making Boston College pay. They don't need a lot of space. A couple of little slip passes. Wright gets that fortuitous bounce. And then it's just the sensational play by Z Bouillon. The spinorama backhand slip pass into Lorenz. Lorenz wires it past Fowler. They're making him look a little more human. Team Butchie for a reason. They have players that can certainly make you pay. Especially from the back end, Colby, as you know, when you have dynamic defensemen, that just feeds your offense. And William and Barron's both assisted on the Lorenz goal. Yeah, those guys are involved every shift offensively. A goal and an assist for Riga Lorenz. What a final he's having. He'll never forget this game. Under four to go. Goche off the timeout. Towards the net, deflected wide with Gasso's big body in front. Yelvi, a nifty play along the wall. Goche stuffed it along the board. Back to Gasso. Gasso used that big body. Quick shot just wide. Goche looking for the diving wraparound. Can't quite get his toe. And this will be icing on Denver if it makes the line. Just does. Hey, we mentioned a big day of hockey coming up on ESPN2, of course, here with the title game. And today, ABC all day long started with Rangers and Islanders and ends with the Bruins and the Penguins, all black and gold. Big game for the Penguins. The Bruins playoff slotting. It's 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Of course, Tristan Bros, the overtime hero twice. David Carl thought about using his time out there, talked to his assistants. Looked at the official a couple of times. He's going to leave this group out. They've been out for a little bit. Oh, Sabrian does a great job. Their best face-off guy. Smith takes the body, but there's Sabrian. Then he'll try to pitch fork it out. He can't almost have the turnover and an opportunity for Boston College. See if they can change here. Again, second period long change. Need to get this puck deep. It's a good stick by Wright yeah. just to push that down enough, and Bros is able to jump out. Rizzo able to jump out. The defenseman, though, is stuck out on the ice. Hershuk makes a nice play. Here's Manedian. Fakes the shot. Tries to win along the wall, but not going to do that against Massimo Rizzo. There's Bros, the Penguins' second round pick. Good pass. Divine shot into the glove of Fowler. He was bothered by Smith.
How about the shots on goal right now? 20 mm. to 11 in favor of the Denver Pioneers. They have just clogged up the neutral zone. They've taken away the weak side attack. You haven't seen Smith really going yet in this game. Leonard's been quiet. And it doesn't take much for these stars, Butchie, but so far, the Pioneers certainly with the upper hand. Face off one, here's Devine. Shot is blocked. Comes to Powell, looking for Ambrosio. Can't quite connect, and Z. Booyam chops it back forward. Clock ticking down here in the second. 2-0 Denver. This is an absolute perfect blueprint for David Carl and Pio Nation. Malone shot deflected wide, and here comes Thompson with that speed. Good back pressure by Ambrosio. Devine picks it up. Nice backhand play to Thompson. Bothered by Malone. Armstrong can't control. Webster back in deep for Denver. Just what they want with under two to go. Denver retreats. They don't want this to be a track meet. Look at the stack right now in the neutral zone. One, two, two. Matica's going to change. But look at the layers and look how wide they are. They're not even given the weak side opportunity. Yelby. Goche hit the referee. Tried to go back to the points. Good break for the Pios. The path too far. Won't be icing. The race is won. Gustafson. Hey, up. Hey, hey, hey. Kingston up to Gasso too far. Yelby comes back to get it. And the Eagles will start again as we approach the one minute to go call in the second period in St. Paul with the national championship trophy on the line. Final minute of play in the second period. One minute. Carter King gets it in deep. Turnover right. Lorenz. Brian back out there again. Got a strong frozen four. Barron's number two. The defenseman looking to make a play. Across! Almost had his man now. Transition. This is what Boston College wants. 30 seconds left. Smith stopped. The Mason's leading score. Gypsy Dodo still has it. Turns again. Got Leonard fires into the glove. Matt Davis. Nothing getting by him. So you wonder why they're having trouble getting through the neutral zone. Give a freeze right there. Look at the layers for Denver. One, two. There's two defensemen back here. You've got F1 up here. They're isolating players in the neutral zone, not giving BC that opportunity to get moving with fluid speed. And that's why so far the Pios have done a nice job of keeping the Eagles off the board. They've won five consecutive games against Boston College, six and one in their last seven, going back to 2012. Man taken down. Again, BC still trying to draw that penalty. Oh, Fowler covers up and then crashing into him goes Sabrian. The big center iceman for the Pios. Well, if you're wondering what it looks like from Fowler's perspective, Sabrian just comes crashing in. Looks like he just caught a little bit of an edge, trying to stop, stay out of the crease. Your Sabrian probably works out in your favor. You see the numbers for Fowler. 111 minutes he went without letting one in. And allowed that goal to Jacob Quillen early in the third. It looked good for Quinnipiac as they took the lead. Then no more goals the rest of that period. Overtime. And then the shutout win as well over Michigan. Second period winding down. Last shot attempt is blocked. And this is a perfect script for the Denver Pioneers so far, Colby. Yeah, if you drew it up. This is exactly what it would look like. Denver locking up the neutral zone, playing thorough hockey. It's going to be 2-0 heading into the third, Butchie. 
Denver pretty, pretty good when leading after two, Arda. Denver, the Sunshine State. Gorgeous! An old school effort from the Pios. This is championship hockey at its finest. A bit of an underdog against Boston College, but they lead 2 0 after 40. Their goaltender now up to 115 saves and 118 shots in this NCAA tournament. Matt Davis is a wall. All right, Colby Cole and the highest scoring team in the land doesn't have one yet. What needs to change in the third? Well, I don't think they supported the puck all that well so far through two periods. I think you see a lot of stretch passes and a lot of BC Eagles getting isolated by this Denver 1 2 2 in the neutral zone. And one of the best ways to beat that attack is short support passes. Make one guy commit, make that three to four foot pass, and then try to attack with speed. And right now, the Pioneers, they've just been better in the neutral zone. They force more turnovers. They pen them in for longer periods of time. And this big line for BC, they're going to need to step up quickly here because it is getting late early. Denver hasn't blown a two-goal lead since December the 1st against North Dakota. Boston College has had a two-goal comeback. Haven't really needed to generate that kind of comeback. They've won 15 in a row coming in. The boys of BC trying to get them going here. Their season is on the line. College hockey careers are on the line. Still no power plays for Boston College. You know, they would love one of those to try to get on the board. Right now, Matt Davis has been the story for the Pioneers. What can the BC coaching staff come up with? Gasso to the net, kicks in, rebound! Oh, Gauthier, good sticks in front by Bros. There's a check along the wall. A little interference there, not called. And Goche gets it in. So Goche and the Eagles go to that hard. We saw Will Smith early in the game. That would, have, that would have been icing if Fowler didn't play it. Hey, that first shift, Goche and Leonard were together, and now it looks like Yelvix with Smith and Perot. So looks like uh, the lines have gotten changed up a little here to start this third period for Greg Brown and his group. Taylor Tannenbaum talked with the BC Eagle coaching staff. She'll have a report in a minute as Perot comes up the ice with Yelby. The Pioneers, every minute that ticks away, they're closer to their 10th national championship. One minute down, 19 to go. Now 18.45. Webster can't get it through. He was on that team. Penalty coming up. Here it is, the first power play for Boston College early in the third. Yeah, Webster is going to get called for a hole tangled up with Bangston over by the box. You just said it, Butchie. They love a power play, and here's the big opportunity for the Eagles. Denver number six, two minutes, holding. McCade Webster was on that title team in 2022. Yeah, this is an unnecessary penalty. Punks at the red line. Doesn't get deep, and then he just kind of hangs on to Bankston's stick. Now all of a sudden, we're going to see that David Carl penalty kill against that high-flying group of freshmen with Cutter Goche, four forwards, Eamon Powell. Now they get to feel the puck. A big opportunity for the Eagles. Leonard and Goche are the dangerous goal scorers on the power play. 13 power plays each. Perot, here's Leonard in front. Great stick in front by Shai Booyam. Taylor Tannenbaum, you talk with the BC coaching staff? Yeah, I asked associate head coach Mike Ayers about the demeanor during intermission in that locker room. He said positive. This is a good group. He said in that second period, they pinned us in for a few long shifts. So in the third, they have to be smarter on changes and get more pucks on net, Gucci. You almost wonder, Butchie, if that's why they split up the lines, get mm -hmm. some of the talent split up, double double threat maybe, back one and two shifts. And you got to think you're going to see a lot of that top six, short 30 seconds on and off. 
Got to win faceoff though with the man advantage in every zone. Losing the faceoff at the offensive end has cost them 30 seconds. Here they go, Perot. He's been feeling it a bit tonight. 34. Passes behind Leonard. Now BC getting clogged up. Goche. They need the big man to get going. Here he comes. Across. Shot. Satan. Beautiful setup. BC is getting point blank chances. Goche shot. Blocked again. Again. Flutters wide. Smith in front. Pro. Back to. Oh my God. What was that? is out of his mind listen to the noise in this building people saluting matt davis the save of the tournament wow you don't hear a sound like that from a crowd often it was shock it was how didn't that happen here comes capone shorthanded backhand save fowler Ryan Leonard was counting that goal. The net was wide open. The amazing pass. Penalty winding down. Boston College still set up. Gustafson has a man. Gasso, he can't complete it. Kept in by Bankston. Here's Yelvi. Penalty ending. Yelvi across. Gustafson. Malone. Soft shot on net wide. And the Pioneers survive. They're doing everything right. But the story is Matt Davis. Denver goes on to win. He's going to be your most outstanding player of this Frozen Four, just like he was the most outstanding player in Springfield. A shocking save. That can take the life out of a team. Uh, right now, the Denver bench preaching, stay above the puck. That's the message right now for the Pios. You stay on the defensive side wherever you are on the ice. You're closer to your defensive net than the player that you are marking. Over 96 minutes without a goal allowed now for Davis. Allowed one early in the BU game. First period against BU. Nothing since. Way outside of the line. BC's he's got a touch up and in fact they'll change. Room for Denver to go north. Will Smith trying to creep behind the play. He did that early, had an early breakaway. Boston College has had point. Blank chances. Perot shot. Rebound. Save Davis. Perot's looked outstanding today. Davis gets taken down. Looking for a trip there. Does it happen? Play continues. To here comes Bouillon. He'll retreat. That's the play right there. It's going to be icing on Boston College. They can't complete the pass. Well, listen to the noise in this building. People are on their feet appreciating the wizardry and the highway robbery that Matt Davis, the poised play by Perot, he put his hands up in the air because he thought it was a good look at this effort by Davis. Unbelievable. His third year at Denver, this is the first year he's gotten the full net. Most of the action, 22-5-3 coming in. 8-1 last year, 3-1 as a freshman. 22-year-old from Calgary. Six feet, 190, undrafted. So he'll have a place to play hockey if he keeps playing like this. In front, Fortescue drops it back for Powell. He's in a great position to shoot it, and he gave it up. Goche and Leonard on the ice together. Their best two goal scorers. Fortescue off the bench, Gasso never got through. Into the Pioneer bench. The pressure is on. The number one overall seed was talking a big game coming into this one. But right now, it's the number one team who's down two.
Well, one time I told my wife, you're better lucky than good, than good. <laughs> well, how about both for Matt Davis? A little luck in the first with the post and then the goodness later in this hockey game. Look at this save by Davis on Leonard and look at the reaction from the eighth overall pick. But the story, Butchie, is that man right there. Those numbers are out of this world. And when it comes to Marion Hera, you were better lucky than good, That's, I'll tell you that. That was exactly how the line went. <laughs> and if she's watching, I'm sure she's laughing. <laughs> 13, 45 to go in the game, regulation. Boston, that's going to be icing again. Unless Ambrosio wins the race. Puck came around the board. See if that pays off. Good play there by Zeeb Guyam. Yeah. Another little slip play. These defensemen that move the puck like that are just so effective at getting you out of the zone clean. Don't miss the post-game trophy ceremony here on ESPN2. And then continuing on ESPN+. Plus. That follows the national championship game. For more information on all the 90 NCAA championships, go to NCAA.com. The NCAA does a wonderful job putting on these championships. It's a big-time feel. It's a big-time event. And these student-athletes are lucky <laughs> to get the scholarship, to get the NIL money, and then to play in an atmosphere like this. Big hit by Leonard. A little late. Play continues. Back to the point. Hershaw keeps it in. Dasso off wing. Looking, looking. Save. Another one. Leonard peeked up before that puck came. Once again, Gochi and Leonard on the ice. What a great stick. Jack Devine chasing Leonard. Here he comes. We have seen his hands on display. Shot into the glove of Davis. We see this high-level talent, Colby, starting to put their foot on the gas here. It's urgency time. Yeah, and I like the line changes that Greg Brown made, splitting up Leonard. But here's Gasso. Look at he's waiting, trying to get Davis to flinch. He gets nothing. And then later in that shift, Leonard looking far side. But right now, the, the puck probably looks like a beach ball to Matt Davis. And you see the concern on Ryan Leonard's face as this gets down and down and down and you start thinking yeah I got to do this I got to try to make that play that can certainly fall into Denver's hands Fortescue just 18 years old Rangers third round pick number five BC has four teenagers Denver just one Fowler the save we heard Sean Richland say before the game these Teams with more teenagers don't tend to finish the job and win it all. And right now, Denver has a 2-0 lead. Yelvik surrounded by Pioneers, but using his good speed. Good play by Barons. Smith back on the ice for Boston College. Gets it back to the point. Gustafson. Shake and bake. Beautiful move by number eight. He's in. Risha. Oh, their second post of the game. Just about the same paint mark as the first one from Gasso. No! Minnesota Wild goalie Mark Andre Fleury would be kissing that pipe right now. Little eye roll from Will Smith Just, as he comes back to the oh. bench. Just tap that thing with your goalie stick as a thank you, as Fleury always does. Couple of posts for the Eagles. They've had point blank chances. Combination of not finishing and outstanding elite goaltending from Matthew Davis of Calgary, Alberta. Lucas Gustafson from Alpharetta, Georgia, almost got him on the board. Shot block, Gustafson again, doing it offensively and now defensively. Number eight, he'll need a break here. He will change as Barons goes back to get it. Played all 44 games now this year for the Pios. Malone now. Scored the overtime goal against Quinnipiac. They need a big one. They need at least two. Denver. Smelling championship number 10. Oh, almost had a man open in front. King. He was a part of the 2022 team. Carter King to the net. 
Down below, he's open, shot, oh, just oh, on the oh, right oh. pad. I'm not oh, sure Fowler. Fowler knew where that one was, but she stuck the flipper out and hit the very end of it. Yeah, he kind of looked around, unsure. Devine, dangerous shooter, trying to get around her shot. Showing off his skating. Nice pass in front. Can't quite get it. Back comes Leonard. Back out there with Gauthier. So that is a definite adjustment. Down after two. Yeah. Leonard, Gauthier. Interesting, though, that freshman line, Butchie, of Smith, Perot, and Smith, uh, excuse me, and Leonard, they have not gone an entire, they have not gone one game this year in the entire season without a point. Now, they're not going to play together, so mm. you kind of wonder. Man. Yo, ding dong. Ding dong, yo. That is as poignant as you will hear it. <laughs> off the front of the post. One of the few times Matt Davis has been beaten in this game. Since March the 1st, save percentage 935 here in the NCAA tournament. He's approaching 980. That's in just insane. Close save. Plays alive. Smith turns, fires. BC needs all the pucks in net they can get. Maybe they'll need a lucky bounce to beat Davis. They're not beating them one-on-one -on -one straight on yet. As Carter Gauthier told Taylor Tannenbaum after one, we need volume. He can't stop 100 shots, can he? Well, they only got 20. Offside at the line. Time to shovel here in St. Paul once again. The Denver Pioneers. Four national titles since the year 2000. They're feeling number 10 in program history. Well, as we get under the 10 minute of the third period, here's a look at a number of Boston College opportunities. They've got the skill, they've got the looks, but it's been all Matt Davis in this third period. You know you're going to get a push from skilled players. And during that last TV timeout, to my left, associate head coach Mike Ayers, He's drawing up some different plays. He's talking to Goche and Leonard about a potential stretch play where one guy from the middle is going to come wide. The wide side is going to go middle. And they're going to look to try to spring one of those two to get the Eagles on the board. Tristan Lemire, who scored in the semifinal game over BU. Concern now on the Eagles. Faces. 9.27 to go in regulation. Got to find a way to beat Matt Davis. Save percentage in the tournament up to 9.76. 123 for 126. Saves to shots. Gasso deep. Leonard. Gasso Goche. You can tell that. Greg Brown's decided to lean on this line, Colby. It's a big, heavy, tough playoff line. Yeah, they're going to come out with the freshman and Yelvik for the offensive zone draw. I think they like having Smith on that left circle. They'll try to get that puck to him. Because he's on the offside, he can just move right into it. He had a good look early. So this is a humongous faceoff here by Gabe Perot. Been good in this game. His best tournament game we've seen, Colby. Oh, this is fourth one going back to. Yeah, watch, watch Smith right there. That's what they're looking for off the draw. He's going to try to move into the middle on his forehand. He'll come across the arc here and he'll look for that shot off this face off. Or he go to Gustafson for the one timer. Number eight is ready. Face off one. Here it is. Exactly as you said, Colby. Save. Again, 124 of the NCAA tournament for Matt Davis. And now they're going to line this way up. And I just saw a little bit of eye contact between Gustafson and Smith. So now they're going to change that play up. They're going to put Perot to the inside of this circle. And I wouldn't be shocked if this puck goes to Yelvik and then right over to Gustafson in the middle of the ice. Best faceoff guy for Denver, though. That's why the change. And he's a man and he wins it. 
Kieran, Kieran Sabrian, their best face-off guy at 55%. Again, David Carl makes the right move at the right time. Oh. Two nothing. We're a little ways away, Colby, but you were once in an NCAA title game where your team was down two. At some point, you pull the goalie down two. I know it's too early now at 840, but what do you think, Greg Brown? Is it five? Is it four and a half? Is it situational? Yeah, I think it's around the five-minute mark. Yeah. You're still down by two goals, and you have the players that can possess the puck like the Eagles do. I think around that five-minute mark, that's when Jack Parker did it. A lot of people thought... It was a little bit of an irregular move to get him out that early, but he certainly knew what he was doing. He was confident in our group, and I'm sure Greg Brown feels the same way. Yeah, you guys got two goals in just over a minute, and then you won in overtime, four to three, over Miami University. That was the fifth title for BU, the last one they've won. How did that feel like when you guys were down two goals? Again, you were the number one overall seed. You were the guys who had multiple guys go to the NHL. Did your confidence remain or were you nervous? I think our team always had belief, yep. true belief, that we could win that game. But I'd be lying if with four or five minutes left when we were still down two, I'm sitting next to Kevin Shattenkirk thinking, and I might have even said to him, what a waste of such a great season. We won everything that year. We barely lost any games. And that's when our bench stayed with it, had the belief. And I'm sure the Eagles feel the same way right now. Mm. Don't see a lot of panic. I think even from both sides, I think both coaches remain calm, both benches remain calm, but it's certainly getting late here. Goche double shifting. He's with Malone and Ambrosio now. Manedians go to big goal in Providence, number 17. He's on the ice, he's got the puck now. Stops to the net, just goes wide. Aiden Hershaw keeps it in. Malone. His, gonna be his final college hockey game, number 13. We know Gauthier's off to the NHL. Gonna be his final eight minutes to go. Down to under eight minutes now. Two nothing Denver. Tripping penalty coming up. Goalie to the bench. Whistle blown. Jack Devine, a leading goal scorer for Denver. Denver, penalty, number four, two minutes, stripping. That's the right call. Certainly is, you see the foot get in there. As Minettian makes that little spin move, a smart play. You know you're kind of opening yourself up to that, so give Minettian credit for kind of walking his way into that. And and it's a little more time than last year, but I know Rand Pecknold's about 15 rows behind you, Colby. Last year, we were down in Tampa, Quinnipiac down. They get a late power play, but Blake, what, four or five minutes to go, and Rand decides to pull the goalie. Yeah, and, looking, of course, Colin Graff tied it up, and they go on to win in overtime. I'm looking down the BC bench just to see if there could be any conversation yeah, about that. That's too much time to go here. You can't give up an empty netter. The power play is so good. And so we'll go five on four with 7.54 to go. Now they're set up Smith. Here's Perot. Cross. Nothing was there as he tried to force it to Gauthier. Smith is open. Here he comes. Looking. Again, looking to make a play in front to Leonard. With good stick by Sabrian. You see neat shots here. Perot. Looking for the perfect play. Goche has it, ripped it, never got there. Blocked by Sabrian. Sabrian's having a monster game. Blocking shots and on the dot. And then another good play by Sabrian. He got his stick right under Goche's stick. Doesn't give him a clean feed. 20 seconds go by. There's a chance, Leonard! Oh, blocker save off the stick of Smith. Smith has it back. Goche. Down to Perot. There's Leonard, quick shot, and another save. And Eighth Leonard. shot on goal for Leonard. Yeah, and look, I'm watching Leonard in front of the net. He's battling with Booyum. He's pushing, he's pushing. That's the first one by Smith out in front. And then as this rolled around, Ryan Leonard, a guy we've called Showtime, all NCAA tournament, pops into that little sweet spot, but unable 
to beat Matt Davis. Now power play two comes out with 106, which you don't see normally. Interesting, he took off the first power play units. I gotta think if they get a whistle, they're going right back out. Yeah. See if they get a shot on going to save. Like you said, they'll be back. Here's Yelvik. Ripped it wide. You know, sometimes you're struggling, but do you go to that second unit? Yeah. Little more meat and potatoes. Shot! Just wide. Oh, Gutsison had a chance, and Denver clears. Yeah, they're calling to get that first unit back out on the ice. Here goes Goche at least. Well, they had a good chance from that second unit. They set it up nicely. Here's Leonard back on the ice looking for Yelby. He'll stay out there. Can't clear as the puck comes around. Banks is going to be able to keep it in. Battling there with Lorenz. Oh, nice kick pass by Smith. One timer off the face. Right off the face of Davis. Five seconds left. Off the stick of Goche. Bodies fall down. Denver screaming for a penalty. Out of the box, Devine. He's coming on on Fowler. Who will clear it up to Leonard. A blistering shot off the goalie mask. Four shots on that power play. David Carl hated right now with the official. Leonard in front. Hershaw. Oh, it's deflected. Shot. Another block shot. Boston College is pouring it on now. This is their last chance. We'll keep an eye on Fowler because we're going to start to get to pull the goalie territory. Maybe they'll wait for the last TV timeout to do that. I don't know. You get a face off in the offensive zone. You get pure possession. I think you got to start thinking now. You need to. You've got the players who can possess the puck. And Eddie throws it in. Davis can't quite get it. Good first pass by Booyam. They try to break it out, can't quite. Hershek will send it back in. Look at Davis out behind yes. the net. What a difference it makes. He's a good puck handler too, and he can really rip that wrist shot of his. Third period chances, seven to two. Favorite Boston College, not surprising. Any team is down to nothing, always seems to get more push. But Matt Davis has just been frozen for heroic. I don't even see the BC bench looking at the goaltender, so I don't even think it's a thought at this point yet. Armstrong gets shoved out. Nice play by Booyam, the young defenseman. Banks and shot, redirection. Oh, nice play, but it's right into the belly. So they'll have that offensive zone faceoff. I expect the goalie to be pulled when we come back. They had their chances, Colby. Yeah, first it was the cross boxer. Gustafson gets all of it. Another right to left save. And then it was the big time shot Pow. by the leader, Goche. But Davis says no. Twenty twenty two, Denver took down Minnesota State five to one to win their ninth natty. Despite being down one nothing, heavily outshot going into the third, the Pios get five unanswered and they win their ninth title to tie them with Michigan. And now they're four minutes and 11 seconds from number 10, which would be the most in college hockey history. They enter on an eight game win streak. They haven't lost since March the 8th to Colorado, 8th to Colorado College. This is their 13th appearance. When they get here, they normally win. Nine and three coming into this one. Close this one out. That's 10 and three in title games. That's impressive. David Carl going over with his team. Six on five responsibilities. You practice this throughout the season. You're prepared. Everybody should know their assignments, but you just talk a little refresher. Make sure if it is six on five, you're holding the net front. But right now, Butchie, it's going to be five. We're going to stay yeah. even aside. I I'm really surprised at this. I really am. You got everybody rested. You can Whoever you want on the ice, you need two. But for now, Greg Brown, the coach of the year, decides to wait. And he went back to Goche, Yelvik, and Gasso. So you know who's coming out next. It's going to be the freshman. That's probably when the goaltender comes out. Sabrian loses the face off to Goche. One timer, never got there. It's bouncing ball back in. Another back in. Two more saves for Davis. Frustration seeping in 
to the bloodstream of Boston College. Yeah, this was a well-designed face-off play. Look how Gasso pops up. He starts on the hash mark, and he drives himself up to the blue line. And what does that do? It forces the Denver players to go out high, stretch out the coverage, and then you're thinking shot to the net and outnumber around Matt Davis. But again, he's just been too good in this hockey game. Faceoff went right into the netting. Fowler remains in the Boston College net. 4 one to go. Here's Will Smith getting instructions for when he is the extra attacker. Still surprised it's not right now, but again, I guess they're going to wait Back another minute or so. Keep an eye on Goche. He's taking this faceoff. If he wins it, look for him to pop out around the top of the circle. Unable to win it. A 50-50 job and unable to fish it out, and the Pioneers get it out of trouble. Slap back in there by Yelvik, and here's another chance to pull Fowler. 3.49 to go. I mean, I'm not sure what they're waiting for if they don't do it here. You've got a face-off. You've got your top freshman line rested. He's talking about it now. You know he's talking about, do I do it? Do I do it? Do I do it? I mean, I think that's a decision as the head coach. You want to do that and do it with conviction. So they're going to continue to leave Fowler in this hockey game. 17 third period saves. Save percentage up to 978 in the NCAA tournament. Great play at the line by Manedian. It's going to come to Smith. He'll go back to Bankston. Manedian got a big goal in Providence. They need him to score now. To the net. Wide. Rebound. Perot can't fish it out. Smith has it. Three and a half to go. Leonard ready. As Smith between the legs. Looking to the net. Another save. Leonard in front. Off the skate. Battling. Chipped up and cleared. Here comes Capone. Tries the bad angle shot. And Smith has it now. Denver fresh legs on the ice. Fowler still in his crease Still, right now. Three minutes to go, down two. You got to think of all the opportunities, as this one's going to be offsides, where you can outnumber a puck with six men on the ice. So, cannot say that I agree with the decision. I think with all the offensive chances they've had, Gucci, you'd love to have that extra guy out there to yeah. win a puck battle repossess the puck an extra set of hands around the net and it looks like we're going to see a timeout here well they take a neutral zone timeout now you can time pull the goalie Boston out College. you can have extra bodies you'll have an extra time body out, out there College. now if you lose the face off it's yeah. a risk but... I, I don't think they will i think that the conversation right now would have to be once we get it into the zone you're coming, so I bet Fowler You, you need a watch. conversation for that? Well, I mean, listen, we're under three minutes here. They've had two offensive That's zone opportunities, and they haven't done it. That's what I'm saying. I don't get the neutral zone timeout. So I'm sure Fowler's going to line up at the hash marks. Yep. He's going to get himself out a little bit. Win the faceoff. Exactly. Bingo. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's probably the call then. Matt Davis is going to be the MOP of this game if Denver holds on. This yeah. is this is a, an all-time performance, Colby. It really has, and it started early with a breakaway save to set the tone, and he's gotten better, and he's gotten bigger as the game's gone along the way. He's been tracking pucks on the rush there. It wasn't the best rebound, but he recovered, and Butchie, the save that he made to really save this game when he dove across and committed highway robbery on Ryan Leonard. That is the one that everybody will remember if the Pioneers are able to hold on here the last three minutes of this hockey game. And the two posts as well, but like any goalie would say, and he might be right, there's nothing there to shoot at. That's all you had was the post. <laughs> so Greg Brown hopes to win this face off, get north. Get Fowler to the bench. Denver has been really good in neutral zone faceoffs. Eight out of ten. Make it nine out of eleven. Four forwards on the ice right now with Powell. So they're prepared for the five and one format. Yeah, should, Fowler should chase Goche to the bench here. 
Here he goes. Yep, here comes Gauthier. Got to get it deep. Beautiful move by Gauthier. Always out. Extra attacker on Gasso. He'll go right to the front of the net, use that big body. He gets the puck. He's the extra attacker. Kicked up nicely by Denver. Puck is okay. Not played with a high stick. Gasso. BC standing around. Open in front. Perot just wide. Gabe Perot was there. Pow, pinching. Sends it across to Smith calmly. Leonard is open. He has it. Denver set up with their five. Wrist shot off. Booyam's back. It comes to Goche. Two-minute warning here in St. Paul. Smith wants the one-timer. Powell doesn't see him. There's a one-timer. Save again by Davis. Goche behind the net. Under two minutes left in the national championship game. Denver seeking their 10th title, and they get the clear. Won't be yeah, long enough for ice cream. It's not going to go. Smith will pick it up. Look at that puck block. 23 third period saves for Matt Davis. Here comes Powell. Good stick work by Wright. He got Denver on the board first and one nothing. BC gets it deep. Watch out for Davis for a goalie goal. He can rip it. Empty net to clinch the national championship. Eagle still alive. The crowd can sense the empty net and the game clinching empty netter doesn't happen. Eagles got to get it deep. They need two goals in 70 seconds. Goche, no. Follows up. Oh, taken down from behind. Leonard takes a man down. And the bodies fly here. David Carl saying looking for a penalty, but right now these ECAC officials go let the boys play. Anything after the whistle, they're probably not going to call. Yeah, they've done a good job in yeah, this hockey game. It's been game. a good game. It's been five on five. They haven't been the story. They've made the obvious ones. They've done a good job on the lines. This is as clean as you can ask for from an officiating crew. Gasso will use his big, strong body to try to win the faceoff. But Aiden Thompson, quick pair of hands, choked down, gets it off the linesman's leg, set down. This will be icing on Denver. Remember, Boston College used their timeout. They can't use it now. David Carl just told the official, I'm not going to use my timeout. I guess why would you at this point? No reason to give BC extra time to draw anything up. Denver has reached the Frozen Four and five of their last seven. They are on a heater. Looking to make it two in three years. One yeah, so Powell, the one timer one block. Rizzo, Goche doing everything he can. Keeps it in. Try to send it across. Great defensive play by C. Booyam. Bank shot attempt by Leonard off of Smith. Doesn't happen. Goche, they need to score quickly. Smith, wrist shot. It's loose. Covered up by Davis. Massimo Rizzo missed 14 straight games. Return for the Frozen Four. And he's back here. Yeah, this is what championship hockey looks like. Booyum with a good stick, committed to the defensive side, the details. You see blocks from your top players. It hurts to win, Butchie. It hurts to win. 38.6. Shot Gasso, another save. One more clear for Denver. Not going to be icing unless Goche can win the race. He's not. He's out of gas. Under 30 to go. That's Lorenz behind the net. Leonard has it. The Denver Pioneer fans are on their feet. They can sense it. Crazy bounce. Leonard behind the net. They're on their feet. The Pioneers for the 10th time to the mountaintop. They've won the national championship in St. Paul, Minnesota.
David Carl gets his second national championship as a head coach. A gold medal as well for Team USA. What a double dip for David Carl. For Z Booyam as well. And for Boston College. Their dream is broken. David Carl does it again. Taylor. Coach, 2024 national champions. What's the overwhelming emotion you're feeling right now? Uh, just really proud of our group. Um, would like to recognize Boston College. Unbelievable season by them. So much respect for their staff. Um, know many of their players. Love those guys. Um, it was a hell of a battle. I'm so proud of our team. The growth we had this year. Uh, what a great atmosphere. Thanks to Minneapolis St. Paul for hosting us. and. Um, just so proud of our program, breaking records. Coach, walk us through the chess match that was between you and a man I know you have a lot of respect for and Greg Brown. Yeah, it's, it was um, <laughs> it was an unbelievable battle. I, I thought our guys did a great job taking away time and space. Our sticks were excellent. They obviously had, they're very dangerous, they had many good looks. Um, what a save by Matt Davis there on the, uh, on the penalty kill for us. And our, our guys, their commitment to coming back to the house, getting sticks on pucks, a lot of blocks tonight. It was a total team effort. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Speaking of Matt Davis, Colby. Matt, Sean Barron's just came up with you and shared a couple of words with you. You've got tears coming out of your eyes right now. What did he say to you that was so emotional? It's hard to put into words. I mean, I'm just so proud of our group. I just love every one of these guys. Well, look, that was one of the most incredible performances we've seen out of a goaltender. There's a reason you're going to be named most outstanding player of the Frozen Four. How do you feel listening to this crowd cheering for you in this moment? Uh, I'm just so grateful. I mean, so grateful for the coaching, the guys, my family. I just, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm not giving you much here. It's all right. Hey, listen, I'm going to ask you one more and let you go. Do you have any words for all these great Pioneer fans that are here in the building? I know they're at home in Denver watching and cheering you on right now. First to 10, baby, let's go. Congratulations, Mac. Go celebrate with your team. First to 10, well done. First, he was speechless, then he found the perfect words. 23 third period saves, one of the most epic performances in Frozen Four history by a netminder. 35 saves in all, and the handshakes begin. Again, some of these young men were teammates at the World Junior. They won gold together. Now they're fighting for a national championship. And boy, both teams are what sports are all about. Boston College gave everything they had. They had chances. They kept coming. They didn't stop until the final buzzer. But Cutter Goche and the Eagles just sometimes in this sport, because of that position of goalie, this kind of thing happens. And it happened here. Shai Buyam with his brother right behind him, his little brother. They're national champions together. Of course, they have a bond for life anyway, but now this will just add to it. They will have this to link them as teammates. They won't be teammates when they turn professional in all likelihood, but they're teammates here. And that man, the emotion that poured from him, you know that he was so dialed that he had to let it out somehow. And he chose to let it out through tears and emotion. And the kid from Calgary building his way to a college hockey career in year three and again David Carl pressing all the right buttons doing all the right things and his team really came up with an ideal game but again the hot goaltender is what it really is all about in this sport and that's what happened here tonight with Matt Davis unbelievable NCAA tournament his team won two to one two to one two to one two nothing you know the respect that this goalie has for him and what a year it was for Jacob Fowler very rarely he faced a hotter goalie than himself we have a national championship trophy to hand out here in St. Paul
They won their first one in Minnesota in 1958. They win their 10th in Minnesota in 2024. Let's give out a trophy. Hockey fans at this time, please turn your attention to center ice to join the NCAA Division I Men's Ice Hockey Committee Chair Jeff Schulman for the presentation of the 2024 NCAA National Championship Trophy. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, how about another big hand for these big hand for these two incredible college hockey programs, the University of Denver and Boston College. On behalf of the NCAA and the Division I Men's Ice Hockey Committee, I'd like to first say a big thank you to our, our amazing hosts here at Excel Energy Center and the University of Minnesota. A big thanks to all the staff and volunteers who once again showed the college hockey world that St. Paul is one of our great host cities for the Frozen Four. And all of you, our incredible college hockey fans, two straight sellouts here, great energy. Once again, you've shown the world that the Frozen Four is one of the NCAA's greatest championships. And now, it's my honor to present this trophy to the captains of the 2024 Division I Men's Ice Hockey National Champions, the University of Denver Pioneers. Cade Webster, he was there in Boston in 2022. Barons, Shai Booyam, Devine, King, Rizzo, and Webster. Caruso, Capone, and Matt Davis were on that squad, didn't play. All tournament team, Z Booyam, Sean Barons, Will Smith, Tristan Bros, Regal Lorenz, and of course, Matt Davis in net. The Frozen Four all tournament team for 2024. Now they bring that trophy over to the corner of the rink where all the Pioneer fans have convened. They get that picture they all want to have on their wall one day. Pass it around. Connor Capone, you mentioned. He was in Boston, didn't get to play in that Frozen Four, so this one's really sweet. Carter King, he was in Boston in 2022. 22-year-old, 15 goals this year, four shirties. He's a guy right in front of the net. Again, Jack Caruso. Another one for the Back up, Netminder. There's the MOP. Rocky Mountain High plays here at the XL Energy Center. Might change his name to Matt Denver. But again, what a moment for the Bullion Brothers. Shy and Ziva, how do you describe what you're feeling in this moment? Your smile's so big. Yeah, you know, just just smiling faces. What a special moment for for all the guys on this team. Everybody, everyone part of Denver hockey, just. I mean, it just, it's an unreal feeling, really. Zeev, you get to do this with your big brother. What does that feel like? It's fucking unbelievable. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, it's great. I mean, it's, it's what we go for. It's why you come to Denver. You want to win championships, you come here. And there's no better feeling, especially with my brother. I'm so happy right now. What will you remember most about this season? Just, just the boys. Just how hard we battle to get to where we are right now. And we're national champions. I mean, that's it. What will the celebration be like tonight? I, I assume it's going to be a long night. Yeah, it's going to be a great night. It's going to be a long one. It's going to be one to remember forever. Zeev, Shai, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Couple, Guys. A couple of Southern California kids. A place that Denver recruits well out there. They came in with nine national championships tied with Michigan. And now they stand alone on the Rocky Mountain top of college hockey with number 10. For Tanner, Colby, producers Josh Hoffman, director Bob Fratteroli, and our entire incredible 
Championship ESPN crew. I'm John Butchergoss saying so long from St. Paul. There's nothing like college hockey, and we thank you for watching. See you next year in St. Louis.